Welcome back to our series, Prairie Avenue Spotlight, where we will showcase their surviving houses on historic Prairie Avenue in Chicago's South Loop. This week, we will look at the history and architecture of the Reed House, constructed during the last decade of building activity on Prairie Avenue following the World's Columbian Exposition. Although this is the only house on the street to have been continuously used as a residence, it struggled to survive amidst massive urban change. Our story begins with the first house built on this site, the arrow pointing to its front doorway. The house, originally owned by Joseph Farnsworth, was one of a pair of brick row houses built in 1867. In the spring of 1871, it was purchased by William and Eleanor Reed for $17,000. Reed was just 31 years old at the time, and was a partner in a wholesale drug firm, which was destroyed in the Great Chicago Fire, but successfully rebuilt. In 1879, Reed became a founder and director, and later vice president, of the Illinois Trust and Savings Bank. His wife died in 1888. Reed funded several significant projects in memory of his wife, including the Eleanor Reed Kindergarten of Second Presbyterian Church at 25th and Calumet, a building for Chicago's Presbyterian Hospital, and buildings on both the Wheaton College and Washington and Lee University campuses. The building shown here was built as the Eleanor Reed Chapel in Godfrey, Illinois, on the campus of Monticello Seminary, the first female seminary in the western part of the United States. Reed also funded this building, which was constructed in Chiang Mai, Thailand, in support of the Presbyterian missionaries who labored there. Built of teak wood, it was the first Western-style building in Chiang Mai and still stands today, now occupied by a Christian school. In 1889, Reed married Caroline Whittlesey. They enjoyed spending their winters at his summer home, Avarana, in the Ozarks near Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Her family home, shown here, known as Whittlesey Place, was perched on a bluff in Ottawa overlooking the Illinois River and became their summer home. In 1894, the Reeds demolished their Prairie Avenue home and began construction on a larger home on the same site. Shown on the right in this photo, taken shortly after its completion, it was designed in the classical revival style, which became popular following the World's Columbian Exposition. It was designed by the architectural firm of Beers, Clay, and Dutton, known primarily for their office buildings, and is believed to be the first steel-framed residence constructed. Author Carl Condit, in his book, The Chicago School of Architecture, noted, All floors and roof loads, exterior walls, Walls enclosing the central octagonal light court and stairways were carried on a frame of steel columns, girders, and joists. The floors were constructed of concrete with expanded metal reinforcing laid over arched channels between the joists. The Reed House thus constituted a miniature replica of the new office buildings that were multiplying in the commercial core of the city. The light court, a critical part of the design, and the probable reason for the steel frame, illuminated the stained glass dome in the first floor music room, shown here. It is attributed to the firm of Healy and Millay. The facade, executed in cream-colored brick, limestone, and terracotta, demonstrates a restrained version of the classical revival with flat and delicate ornament, reminiscent of the work of the 18th century English designer Robert Adam. The large Palladian window on the third story, with its finely detailed fan light, marks the location of the ballroom. Two oval windows, located to either side of the facade at the second floor, denote the location of the master bedroom. One of them illuminates the closet. In this view, you can also see more of the finely detailed ornament, including several classical motifs drawn from Greek and Roman architecture. Another fine feature of the design is the elaborate wrought iron work. Utilized for the low fence running along the front sidewalk, the handrails on the main staircase, 
and the grills over the basement windows. Over the time, the balusters located over the port and at the top of the building were lost. When the roof balustrade was removed, several of the individual balusters were mounted on the corner posts, as seen in the view at right. Large decorative urns would have been located here originally. William Reed retired from the bank in 1907 and spent the last few years of his life traveling extensively through Europe. He died at his summer home in 1910. A few years later, his wife married Dr. Henry Reynolds, and they continued to occupy the Prairie Avenue home. They would have been in residence in January 1918 when one of Chicago's largest blizzards deposited nearly 15 inches of snow, followed by an additional 8 inches a few days later. The event shut down the city, and residents had to shovel out the street, shown here with the Reed House visible at center. Caroline Reed died in 1935, and the house was sold at auction soon after to a school teacher. In 1949, the house was purchased by rare book dealer Gerald Nedwick. Although the block was still largely intact when he moved into his new home, including the attached houses both north and south, that would soon change. Revere Camera Company had moved into the neighborhood and was anxious to acquire land to provide parking for its employees. During the mid-1950s, all of the surviving houses around the Reed House were torn down and the land was converted to parking. Nedwick refused to sell. The result was that the Reed House, which had once formed part of an unbroken wall of beautiful row houses, found itself isolated and surrounded by parking lots on all sides. The decades of soot from the burning of coal darkened its facade and only made it look more lonely and forlorn. Nedwick died in 1966, by which time R.R. Donnelly owned the parking lots, and they were anxious to tear down the house that stood in the middle. The attorney negotiating the sale, Mary Neff, fell in love with the house and persuaded Donnelly to let her purchase it and live there. They even gave her $10,000 to help fix it up. For the next 33 years, she lovingly cared for the house as one of the only residents in the entire neighborhood. When Neff died in 2001, there was concern for the house, which was not part of the landmark district and therefore not protected. As the last surviving house on that block, a developer could have easily come in and purchased the entire block for a large new development. The next year, however, a new owner was found for the house, and redevelopment was limited to the new Prairie East townhomes built to the north. In 2003, the new owner had the house listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The following year, he cleaned and restored the facade, revealing the beautiful yellow and cream colors for the first time in many decades. Today, the house stands in a remarkable state of preservation, being the only house on Prairie Avenue to have been used continuously as a single-family residence since its construction. During the annual Glessner House Walk Through Time house tour, held each year in June, visitors to the Reed House marvel at the original fireplaces, light fixtures, mosaic tile floors, and the spectacular mahogany-paneled music room that appear just as they did when the Reeds resided here more than a century ago. That concludes our look at the Reed House and our Prairie Avenue Spotlight series. We hope you've enjoyed learning a bit more about the history and architecture of one of Chicago's most legendary streets.